Yeah, so in extreme cases, so I, I do want to note that not everybody and not even most people with hoarding disorder get into that extreme situation, but for those people who do have an extreme problem when they have infestations or smells or garbage, neighbors do get involved. And um, I do talk a little bit in the book about the rights of the person with hoarding disorder and the rights of the society around them. And there is a balance. A person with hoarding disorder has a psychiatric illness. They are, they have rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act in the United States. There are um, active ways to help again, do the harm reduction, but harm reduction needs to involve the entire neighborhood. So you don't want rats in the neighborhood or other vermin. And so that would be a mitigation procedure that would take into account the harm to the neighborhood in those extreme cases. Or the harm to a child, if there's a child in the home who can't do their homework because there's not a clean space, that also would be taken into account in that harm reduction model. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, that interesting balance between um, uh, not so. I, I always worry about the word rights because that, that seems. But but the, the the freedom to to live in your own and you know to live in your own space the way you you want, and that balance of uh, social acceptability and uh, and social safety. So, so it's a it's a bit of a, a, a balanced thing. But it, it does it does bring my mind back to to the people functioning successfully with quite difficult mental disorders that uh, that we actually say let's leave you alone uh, a little or let's not leave you alone let's just allow you to manage as you say as to as to to cope with situations and to harm minimize uh, that might be a, a a reasonable way to think about rather broad swathes of of social problems yes because when i when i think of sorry when i when i think of um, myself as a clinician and projecting my own uh, how i like to live in my space and projecting that onto the client um and there's a I mean, I'm imagining you could be crossing all sorts of lines there, trying to project your own, what you would consider, um, you know, safe and healthy and optimal in your living environment to the, the client where the client could possibly be uh, much happier in a much more cluttered environment. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, no, I think that's right. And, and we want to maximize quality of life, but I don't define what quality of life is. My client does. Yeah. And um, I do take into account some of the objective measures because quality of life may be impaired by their physical surroundings in some way. And so that will matter. But my goal is not to take away their clutter unless they want that to happen. My goal is to maximize their health and well being. Um, and that may involve letting them keep their clutter if. That is the best outcome for them. Yes, and uh, but just help them to do it in a way that's successful. And again, this uh, it's really beautiful in the book going through all these different different ways in which you work and the different case studies of of reminding us that it's the therapist's goal uh, to assist the client. Uh, there is to take the client from a place of difficulty to a place of less difficulty, uh, rather than um, as as Matt was saying, the, the, this. There is a, a, a tendency in some spaces for a client to say, well, if you were sort of a little bit more like me, then everything would be fine. Mm -hmm. And we, we, it's a good reminder uh, each time we come across these things of our responsibility to care for the client's care for themselves. Right, right. I am not there to tell them what to do. I tell my students, our job is to meet the client where they're at and to help them get to where they want to be. Mm. We're not to determine where that is. That's that's not our job. Yeah. Yes, it's such a it's such a simple message, and I, I if we probably underplayed that there, but it, but it, but it is where where they are, and uh, to get them to where they want to be. Thank you for tuning in to the science of psychotherapy. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell so that we can reach more people and bring you more science of psychotherapy. And if you're a mental health professional, check us out at thescienceofpsychotherapy.com.